What is good guys and welcome to today's video. Got a bit of a treat for you. This morning I woke up super early. I woke up at 7 a.m. Jumped in Alex's 240SX and drove all the way to Orlando. Oh crap, you already know where I am. You know whose car that is. We are at LZ MFG headquarters. Having just a rad day, hangs, chills, vibes, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to do some riding later on, which I'm really excited about because I haven't been able to ride at any skate parks whatsoever. And as you guys know, I just started getting to BMX. So we're gonna do that a little bit later. But let's look at some cool cars, because uh, Adam's got his Skyline back, and you guys know how much I love Skylines. They're my thing, and I've been dying to check it out. Behind the scenes. <laughs> so Johan's currently working on Adam's Skyline, so we get to look in the bay. This is goals for me. I love that there's so much going on, but it's still nice and clean. Look at all this space here. So nice. Just the finer details, like seeing things like these bungs here that dissipate heat faster to save the sensors and all that kind of stuff. It's so nice. Build quality is incredible. I'm so salty that Adam not only has one set of Blitzo 3s, but two. <laughs> oh yeah, there's faces in the office too. You've got like, what's that? Three sets? I think I only have two faces in the office. Oh, okay. So two full sets in a pair. That's still more than anyone else. So Adam has this very expensive whiteboard here in the workshop, and this is all the jobs and the things that get done here. And uh, I'm hoping that if I just kind of like sneak my own thing here, that maybe I'll get like my own drift car built for me and they won't even notice. So we'll just put here, Samets 350Z. Make drift ready. There we go. All right, so hopefully if I come back here in a week or so, I'll magically have a 350Z that's drift ready. Jumping in the truck with the Shulmanator. Man, be honest now, how many girls have you Shulmanated in here? Zero. <laughs> for real, really zero. Quick little stop at BC Racing. I think you guys know what we're getting. So because of the whole COVID situation, we couldn't go inside the warehouse and check it out, but we did get it from one of the guys at the back of the warehouse. So really pumped. These are going on the Miata. We got the DS series. We're not gonna be messing around with uh, any BR stuff. We went straight for that flex baller status. If you don't know anything about the DS series, it's essentially like valve differently and stuff. So you're going to have way better response and feeling in corners and stuff like that. Really good for a sporty car, which is exactly what a Miata was designed for. And now we got to start the eight hour journey back to Adam's uh, workshop. Yeah, it's really far. So far, right? We need, like, we need some snacks first. Yeah, we need some snacks gas. and some gas. Yeah. yeah. Really back. Oh, that was quick. That was really fast. Yeah. <laughs> so cringe. <laughs> oh, nice pink Z. I want one. Just got a fresh brew in the grocery getter, boys. Hi, right, Sam. Don't plot on the wrong side of the road this time. I won't. I didn't include that in the video last time. Oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. People were wondering why I was like stressed and stuff. This guy, this Japanese guy shows up, drives my S13, pulls out on the wrong side of the divided highway. Divided highway, get out of here. All right, it was, it's a one lane road, but still main. Uh, CD, you have to push down, go over back. Yeah. I'm going. What? Maybe you just, it's in. Oh, that was it? Ooh, clutch point is real. I like the clutch though, it's manageable. Yeah, no, like, I mean real as in like, it's good. Um, you probably aren't going to get into the higher gears, but just keep in mind there's no like, uh, like it'll kind of go past the fifth and sixth gate, so okay. you probably won't even go to fifth or sixth though. Probably not. So right, right? Oh. Yes. So when you go right, like stay on the right. It likes wide open, it doesn't like anything else, so go okay. wide open. Wide open. Yep. Hey, Grant. Careful, this bridge is gonna jump, so just slow down a little, yeah. The good old bridge. Yeah, you're good. Jeez. Yes. Uh, just go all the way over to the left. This thing feels so good. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. 
like it? I love it. It pulls in third. Like oh, yeah. Freight train. So we're going to go left here. Yeah. Love this thing. I feel at home in it already. It's a short shifter. I like it in this car though. Can you feel the soft springs in front? Yeah, it's really soft. Super gripped up though. Yeah. But you can really feel it going like this in the front end. Short, but what'd you think? This thing is epic. Yeah? Yeah, I'm so excited. Ah, I love Skyline so much. God. The day that you built this, I was so hyped that you were building an RB. Finally. It seriously was the best thing ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool that Adam let me drive this. Thanks, man, you're an absolute champion. Now I gotta make a, uh, a clickbait thumbnail of me pretending that Adam gave this to me. <laughs> Not really. Heading to Adam's house right now. Thing's cool. Feels so unfair. Tisk tisk tisk. Someone's been doing some skids. All right. Anyways, I'm just grabbing this bike out of the passenger seat. We're gonna put it back together. Adam, let me borrow this one. This is his FD bike, so this is normally in the tote home. But we're gonna put this thing together. Whew, it's so damn dreams goals. Ah, it's killing me. All right. Let's go get the bike. Put it together. And then we're going to do some riding, have some fun. I'm pumped because it's been so long since I've been able to ride and just been able to get some more practice in on a bike that's probably sized for me as well because me and Adam pretty much share the same height. So, so I've got to put this thing back together. And like you guys know, I'm completely new to BMXs. And it was really funny. I wish I was filming this back at the shop. I had this thing like holding it like this and was working on it. And then Adam goes, hey, Sam, there's a really easy way to work on bikes. How did I not figure it out before? I have no idea. Anyway, so we're gonna put the front tire back on, which is super simple. And then I gotta raid Adam's tools and try to find a 17 mil socket and an extension. Oh, there's a lot of nuts. <laughs> Get this thing together and go have some fun. I'm just excited to learn, honestly. Got this thing together, let's go have some fun. All right, we're riding on the ramp. Welcome, Sam at Vlog Watchers. He's behind me. He's fallen about seven times. Mostly just trying to get up to the ramp, not going down it. Dude, I'm so, like I've learned so much here in the last hour than I have every other time I've ridden. Come up here with Chris Money Rudnick. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Dropping in like a champ. Let's see, has he got some air? Yo! Style. Watch him go back up the ramp. Heck yeah. Let's go again. Pump that ramp going down, dude. You'll get more speed. Pump it? I'm yeah. scared of speed off this. Yo, dude. What's the flat? Ugh. Do flare. Do what the <laughs> Yo. Ugh. Yo, do a backwards entry. Huh? Do a backwards entry. Luke Fink could probably pull it off. It's called a fakie. <laughs> Yo. All right, so we just finished up with BMX and I had a bunch of fun, but Adam was telling me not to look at the 34 or anything because he wanted to go, go and take me through the entire car. And as you guys know, 34s specifically, the Midnight Purple GTR is like up there on my dream car list. And uh, this lucky guy managed to get one way before I could. So I'm super salty, but Dude, show me this car. Show me your favorite thing about this entire car. Uh -huh. If there's one thing you could pick. Man, you really put me on the spot there. Because I really don't got to do much cool to the car yet. I don't know, just like the, the overall aesthetic, right? I, I like, I didn't think that, I, I originally I wanted white tees mm. for the Midnight Purple, but I think the bronze works really well. It really does. For the overall aesthetic, like mid, Midnight Purple looks so good in these colors. Sorry, in, just in these cars in general. Especially this one. The tees look great with the bronze. She's dirty right now, but... Yeah, it's fine. 
it just means it's been driven, which is what I like to see. <sighs> the risers are sick. Yeah, I don't think I'm too crazy about the carbon, but mm. I like how it kind of makes it look a little bit more aggressive. Oh, you got the wing extension too. Makes it look aggressive. Man, everything about this car is goals for me. Dude, all right, let's pop the hood and show me all the good stuff. <laughs> nice hat, by the way, dude. Thanks, bro. The interior wise, it's like fairly stock. Yep. I'll have a look at the interior and tell me what you think in terms of cleanliness. You can be honest too. Yeah. I don't think it's the cleanest example. Okay. Like I, I've seen, you know, not too much. Well, vehicles. like these things are nearly 20 years old. Like they are 20 years old. So you the can't way. expect them to be like factory off the floor condition. The way that I liked it, you know, I'm going to drive it. And if I got something that was like a super co collector car, I'd mm. be less likely to beat on it. Mm. But, you know, I went through the car pretty carefully when I looked at it. I never even really talked about it much like when I went down to go look at it. Mm. And it's, it's really clean, I think. Yeah, like the first thing you look for in any R chassis is here. Look for any rust or any repair work there. And then inside here on both sides. And it's totally clean. That's super good. It means you've got a good chassis. I, I usually look like, you know, I guess it's not the best thing to look for because it, it could be easily replaced. Mm. But I'm, I'm always looking for like oxidation and yep. shit on the engines to mm -hmm. kind of, it's usually a pretty good giveaway or. Yeah. And this thing looks really relatively clean. Another thing to look for that a lot of people don't know about is look for paint marking on nuts and bolts. Um, if you find that on anything in Japan, that's what all the mechanics do when they disassemble an engine. Mm -hmm. They mark everything when they do it back up so that they know they haven't missed a bolt. That's only ever done out of OEM shops. Interesting. So when you see like uh, a perfect example is Chris's 32 Skyline. Every bolt on that had a pen marking on it, which is what they do to, re to make sure that they've definitely tightened it. So it's a good sign that everything's been apart before and like rebuilt. So, I mean, obviously this car probably had engine sound at one point. It has like a mines downpipe and a mines mm. chip DCU. Oh, that's cool. I think they're stock turbos. Yep. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things I like, almost wish we could take for a rip and you tell me, because it's, it's one of those things like, sometimes I think it's the slowest car in the world and other times they drive it, it feels like actually pretty fast. <laughs> they do feel slow, but. Like even when they're fast, they feel slow. Yeah, that's right. Because it is a heavy car. Just like looking at everything. Everything looks so clean in here, man. You really did get a good car. Like I'm not. I'm not like sucking up or anything because yeah. you're LZ, but no, like. What do you think about me painting the bay midnight purple? I've gotten mixed opinions about it. Yeah. From what I've been told, if I'm like, see, everyone's like, oh, but resale, man, people aren't gonna want the bay tamper with. You yeah. Know, I'm not gonna ever sell it. No, that's right. I feel like for me, I want a pretty like show car bay. So if I could just do the whole thing midnight purple and then just have it like. Yeah. As long as you can find someone that can do the same then for sure do it. I mean, there's stuff on this car that's painted that you wouldn't even know. Yeah, that's right. As long as you get the right paint code and the right painter who does a good job, you can do it. Like this front bumper was like recently touched up. Recently? Yeah. Couldn't even tell. Yeah, the mirrors were touched up as well. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't have Ganadors on that yet. I have Ganadors, I haven't done painted yet. <laughs> They're Dude. pretty expensive for 34s. I think the best thing, uh, like the... The main thing that I love, the fact that you have a 34 GTR, is that you're not just going to put it in the corner as like a trophy car. Dude, the funny thing is that's what this was supposed to be, but it's... <laughs> and then I think about it, and let's say I, I put it in the corner and let it sit for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, and it appreciates 30 or $40,000. Yeah. That. I would make more out of using the car, enjoying it. Like, exactly. So it, it kind of, it's a really cool situation where I'm financially motivated to have fun and actually enjoy my cars. Yeah. So having a look in the interior now, it's so clean. Very nice. Top secret floor mats. Ooh, the keys are here. Uh, let me just, just sneak in here. Deep, heavy, deep, heavy breathing boys. I wonder if he's gonna mind. He just said I can pull it out. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> you guys probably didn't even hear this thing start up. Because of the Supra. Let's just cruise on out nice and slow though. We definitely don't want to scratch this thing. Hmm? How's your driving? 
ride, bro? <laughs> it was short, but still, thank you so much. Baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> oh, it sounds good though. Where's the interior? Interior is so clean, literally. It's really nice, dude. You got such a good car. Thanks, bro. Yeah, for this thing being this age, like that's one thing I feel like you always have to remind people, these are old cars. But yeah, I love those Nismo tails. <laughs> Drink, my precious. Drink. <laughs> it's been so long since I've said that line. Brings back Japan vibes. Um, guys, I don't really know what to say. I'm sure this is a weird jump going from the 34 to this, but nonetheless, I had an absolutely incredible day. Literally just chill hangs. I am so thankful for the amazing friends that I have in my life. Definitely consider Adam up there. And I don't know, it was just epic vibes. It was so like, Japan vibes like at Ebisu whenever he's over for drifting and stuff like that. It was it was a great day. I don't want this to get too sappy and bromancy, but thanks for watching guys. Smash that like button, leave us a comment. Make sure you go give some love to Adam and his channel. I'm sure you already guys already do. But one person I do want you guys to go give some special love to is Alex. He let me drive his 240SX all the way to Orlando and back today. He didn't have to and I'm very grateful for that. So epic friends once again coming through for me. So thank you so much, Alex. Really enjoyed the car, worked flawlessly. And it's surprisingly quite a comfortable ride for this uh, ride height and stiff spring rates. So anyways, I'm gonna finish gassing her up and head back home. There we go. Once again, guys, don't forget to smash that like button, leave us a comment. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's video because we got all the parts for the Miata ready. Tomorrow we're assembling. We're dropping the motor in, fingers crossed. No more problems. It's dark. I'm sorry. But I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Jamata.